Hello and welcome. This is the AP Physics 1 review video for our last unit, which is Unit 7 Torque, Rotational Motion. As always, this will be a problem review of both F MCQs and FRQs. All of those questions are in the document description, and there will, this PowerPoint will also be linked that has all the work that we've done on it. And uh, this will not cover the content because that is on College Board's AP Classroom Daily video, so go check that out if you want to learn the content. But here we practice how to use that, and let's get started. Alright, first question. A, unifo a uniform meter stick of mass 0 0.2 kilograms is pivoted at the 40 centimeter mark. Where should one hang a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms to balance the stick? So the, so the main equation for this unit, obviously, is torque. Right, as in, as the man in it says, and torque is the radius times the force times sine theta. Right, so the radius of the moment arm times the force times sine theta. And the most important thing we do with this is we compare it, right? So how are we going to compare this to another torque, right? So this is the count, say, this is the clockwise torque, right? And we're also going to have a counterclockwise torque because we're hanging up two objects. And basically, when they ask us to balance the stick, or when they say the stick is at rest or in equilibrium, that just means that these tau's, T tau, has to be equal to each other. Right? So basically, this counterclockwise torque that you get from this 0.5 kilogram has to be the same as this counter this clockwise torque for hanging masses, right? So the both of those are going to have 90 degree angles, and the sine theta is going to be 1 for both of them, so that's going to cancel out. So really, it's just the r times the force here. So. Let's see. So the uh, it's the meter stick is pivoted at the forty centimeter mark, right? So let's let's draw what's going on. Right, this is the meter stick. So this is the meter stick. And here's forty centimeter. And here is fifty centimeters right at the center. And here is a 0.2 kilo. Well, no. Here is the 0.2 kilograms, right? Because it's a uniform meter stick. And how we express that in terms of torque is we express that as the gravitational mass, right? So we're going to draw this arrow, right? That represents a torque, right? And that torque would be what? Well, the radius is from 50 centimeters to 10 centimeters, right? So that's 10 centimeters, or 0 0.10 meters, and then times the force. Well, what force do we have here? We have the force of gravity, right? So this would be 9.8, or 10. You can just use 10. Since we're comparing it, that's going to be a ratio anyway. These are going to cancel out. So 0 0.1 times 10 times the mass of the meter stick, which is 0 0.2, right? So this torque in all is going to be equal to 0 0.2 Newton meters. And we need to find a way to get the same torque that provided by the 0 0.50 kilogram mass. Right. Now, starting to plug into this RF equation, which is 0 0.5 ki 0 kilogram mass, we get the radius. Right, so we don't know what the radius is, right? We're trying to find that. Radius times, well, it would be 10 times 0 0.5, so it would just be 5. So 0 0.2 equals R times 5, which means that R is going to equal 0. 
zero four meters, and this is four centimeters. So it's going to be four centimeters from this forty this forty centimeter pivot. So let's think about where exactly this this uh which which direction it goes in. Right? So either you can put it on the this side or this side. Right, so if we put it here, then then we're going to end up with this. So the arrow is going to keep going down this way. Well, that doesn't really help, does it? Like, it provides an equal torque, but it's in the same direction, right? It's not a counteracting torque, right? So it just adds to that torque and makes it 0 0.4 newton meters, right? Because it's going in the same direction. That's why that one doesn't work. That's why it has to be on the other side as the other arrow. So that way, one point, there's 0 0.2 newton meters clockwise and 0 0.2 newton meters counterclockwise. And that way it balances out. So therefore, our answer is 4 centimeters away from 40 centimeters in the direction away from the center. So that would be B, 36 centimeters. Let's move on. A uniform meter stick is balanced at its midpoint with several forces applied as shown below. If the stick is in equilibrium, the magnitude of the force X in newtons is... All right, so again, we have hanging masses, right? Or like they, are, they already told us the gravitational mass, but we, we still have hanging masses. So all of these are going to be right angles. So I don't really need to worry about the sign here, right? So I don't need to worry about the sign. We just need to figure out the RS, right? So the, the clockwise torque is made up of this arrow as well as this arrow, right? Both of those are going in the clockwise direction. So that would be 20 times, uh, or 0 0.2, 0 0.2 times the radius. Or no, 0 0.2 is the radius. Right, 0 0.2 is the radius. 0 0.2 meters times x plus 0 0.4 times 200 is the clockwise torque and the counterclockwise torque is this big arrow over here that's 30 centimeters away that's going to equal to 0 0.3 times 300 All right so we end up with 90 equals 80 plus 0.2 x so this 0.2 x will also equal 10. And if 0.2x equals 10, and the magnitude of x is going to be 50 newtons, and we're done. Keep going. A door seen from above in the figure below has hinges on the left-hand side. Which force produces the largest torque? Magnitudes of all forces are equal. So now we have a conceptual problem. But it still utilizes this torque formula. All right, so the first thing we notice is that the, the force is the same, so that's not going to make a difference right here. What about the radius? Well, the biggest radius will have the biggest tau, the biggest torque. All right, so we can cross out. We can cross out the ones that don't have the biggest radius, and that would be a. Right, because its radius is like basically zero. Everything else is applied at the end, so they all have the same radius. Let's look at the second part, the sine theta. Right, so sine theta is an, at a maximum when theta equals ninety degrees. Right, and let's see here, it's less than ninety degrees. The sine theta will be less than one. Here it is ninety degrees. The sine theta will be one. And here it's less than ninety degrees again. So sine theta will again be less than one. So therefore, the maximum is in this one, the in C, where you have a right angle. So therefore, C is going to produce the most torque. And our answer is C. Keep going. Meter stick is supported at each side by a spring scale. 
A heavy mask is then a heavy mass is then hung on the meter stick so that if the spring scale on the left hand side reads four times the value of the spring scale on the right hand side. If the if the mass of the meter stick is negligible compared to the hanging mass, how far from the right hand side is the large mass hanging? Okay. So you have a meter stick, right? So we have a, have a meter stick, right? Put it at each side. Right, spring scale. Right, so spring scale going up here. Put a circle on top. Spring scale here. And this is X, right? And then this is going to be like 4X. Or x. All right, and we're told that the mass of the meter stick is negligible, so we're not going to be doing anything there. We're not going to be like drawing the forces and trying to find the gravitational force of that. We just have that the heavy mass is hung. So, so let's let's put this as the midpoint, right? Now let's think about this. If we put the mass on this side, right, on the on the left of that center line. Then the radius to this spring scale, the left spring scale, is going to be less than the radius to the right spring scale. So the right spring scale will have more, but we don't want that, right? So that means we have to have a thing over here, right? Now, so we have to have it closer to the right hand side. That way, this the force that the right hand side reports is going to be less than the force the left hand reports. Okay, so the force is going to be the same, right? Because it's the same mass, right? And so all that's changing is really the radius, right? So if we draw a line here, it means that this length is, and then that's that length is L, and then this length is four. L. So together this makes the 5L equals this 100 centimeters, right? 100 centimeters or 1 meter. So L is 20 centimeters. L is 20 centimeters. So L should be 20 centimeters away from the right hand side. And I don't know why that's not an answer to it. Right, I think the quest just messed up and meant to say left hand side right here. Let's say to the left. All right. Right, let's say left hand side. And therefore, 4L is 80 centimeters, so it's 80 centimeters away from this left hand side over here. And the answer is 80 centimeters. Let's keep going. A uniform meter stick has a 45 gram mass placed at the 20 centimeter mark as shown in the figure. If a pivot is placed at the 42.5 centimeter mark and the meter stick remains horizontal in static equilibrium, what is the mass of the meter stick? So this is another scenario where they'll tell you something like a static equilibrium, right? Static equilibrium at rest. So what this means, right, is that there's not a net torque, right? The counterclockwise torque will be equal, I mean, the clockwise torque will be equal to the counterclockwise torque, or the other way around, right? It really doesn't matter. But these two will be equal. And we only have two torques on our figure, right? The first torque is of, over here, right? And the second torque is going to be right here. That's the mass of the meter stick, right? So we always put the the mass of the the like meter stick, the moment arm, right here in the center. And this torque is going to be applied here. And then there's going to be a torque applied here. Right? And now we just have to figure out what we can do with this. Right? So we can write out the equation the torque equation for these, right? Again, as always, as usually at least. 
right angles. So we can ignore the sine term. So it's tau equals RF. And here that equals 22.5 centimeters. So 0.225 meters times, and we could just say like 0 0.045 grams and for this too. But that gets a bit like that, that's a bit much right now. And we don't really need to do that because that's the same units, right? So we can just make sure you just write in the units, but you don't have to convert them into the standard units. So that is the the uh the torque that's being applied here. That's the torque wait, no, that's the torque in the counterclockwise direction. So we need to find the torque in the clockwise direction, which is going to be this torque. Okay. Now this torque is going to be 7.5 7 7.5 meters centimeters away. So if we just divide this by 7.5 centimeters, we would end up with the mass of the meter sticks. Because yes, we'd end up with the mass of the meter stick. Because put this 10 here, a gravitational constant for acceleration, and that would equal 22.5 times 45 times 10 would equal the 7.5 7 centimeters. times the mass, times the gravitational constant 10, right? Sometimes we can leave that out because it doesn't matter, right? That's why I did that here. So the 10s will cancel, and then you divide by 7.5. 22.5 divided by 7.5 is 3, so that'll be 3 times 45 grams, which is 135 grams, and therefore that is our answer. So choice D. Let's keep going. A massless rigid rod of length 3D is pivoted at a fixed point W. And two forces, each of magnitude F, are applied vertically upward. Right, again, that's a right angle, so it's vertically upward. A third vertical force of magnitude F may be applied, either upward or downward, at one of the labeled points. With the proper choice of direction at each point, the rod can be in equilibrium if the third force of magnitude F is applied at point. Which one? Well, let's see what we have here. So if we start writing out tau clockwise equals tau counterclockwise, right? Because they're asking us, well, which conditions will make it stay in equilibrium? We notice that the the counter the, the counterclockwise torque which is this one, is length 2d away, the so 2d times f, this force right, this torque right here is 2d f. Yeah, well, this one is d f. And we want another clockwise d f uh, torque, and that would make the torques equal, right, in both directions. So, if we want to make a torque of df, we need to have the force applied at d away from the center, right? Which means that, let's see, answer choice a, y cannot be correct, right? Because that's not, that's two away, right? So that gives us too much. v or x, well, v is here, one away, x is also there, one away. So that, well, that seems to work. We already said that y doesn't work. And W is the fulcrum, so that's not really going to do anything. So it looks like A is our answer. I mean, B is our answer. And it is the answer, but there is one more thing I'd like to talk about in this problem. And that is how they can, like, put in uh, another question saying, like, the, um, they ask with the proper choice of direction. And they can put in questions that talk about that proper choice of direction, because if you don't put the proper choice of direction here, you're just going to make it worse, right? If you have this force from V, it needs to be going counterclockwise, right, to do anything. Same thing with, well, with X, it would need to be going also counter, also clockwise, which would be this way, right? So you make sure you pay attention to the direction of things, right? Especially in these questions when they tell you, well, you have to change the direction, and what happens when you do? 
So just pay attention to that. But we are done with that question. And next is a five meter uniform plank of mass 100 kilograms rests on top of a building with two meters extended over the edge as shown. How far can a 50 kilogram person venture past the edge of the building of the plank on the plank before the plank just begins to tip? All right, so it seems like a bad idea, but let's break this down. Let's break this down. All right, so the center is going to be like right there. Right now, the meter stick, I mean, the uniform plank is at what, 100 kilograms. So that torque, this torque going downwards, right, the counterclockwise torque is going to be R, which is, it's at 2.5 meters right now. And the, the fulcrum is three meters away from here, right, or two meters away from here. So the moment arm, the radius is 0.5 meters times the hundred times the hundred kilograms times ten, right? As our force times sine theta, but it's vertical. It's it's vertical in any direction. It's going to be a uh, 90 degree angle, right? So this is 100 times 10,000 times 0.5 is 500 Newton meters. And uh, when the plank just start, begins to tip, that means that the counterclockwise torque is equal to the clockwise torque. This is also going to equal 500 Newton meters where he's at the maximum radius. Right, capital M, at the maximum radius. So we then we just have to divide by the force of the person, right? So that would be divided by 50 times M, which is one meter. So the person can venture one meter past the edge of the building on the plank before these torques are equal and anywhere past that this will begin to tip because the, the torques are unbalanced. Therefore the answer is B, one meter. Let's keep going. To weigh a fish, a person hangs a tackle box of mass 3.5 kilograms and a cooler of mass 5 kilograms from the ends of a uniform rigid pole that is suspended by a rope attached to its center. The system balances when the fish hangs at a point of one fourth of the rod's length from the tackle box. What is the mass of the fish? All right, so a pretty weird question. Well, let's break it down. So it's again, right? It's the system is going to balance, right? That's the goal. That is the, uh, what does that mean? That means the equal torque, right? P tau counterclockwise, tau clockwise equals tau counterclockwise, right? The, the counterclockwise torque, right? So the torque's going this way, are going to be 3.5 times L over 2 plus mass, right? So we'll just call it M times L over 4. And that is going to equal to the clockwise torque going this way, which is going to be 5L over 2, right? Because we can, of course, neglect the, the uh, sine theta. We also took out a factor of 10 here right, for the gravitational constant, but we can do that because they all have the 10, so you just pull it out. Uh, we can subtract 2.5L over 2 from both sides. Right, and make this make this 1.5 L over 2, and then divide by L, right, and then multiply it by 4. Multiply it by 4. And that, oops, that would give us this times 2, which is going to be. Three, so our answer for this question is three kilograms, 
to keep going. On on a horizontal tabletop is pivoted at one end and is free to rotate without friction about a vertical axis as shown. A force F is applied at the other end at an angle theta to the rod. If F were to be applied perpendicular to the rod, at what distance from the axis should it be applied in order to produce the same torque? Well, this here is going to produce a torque of R F sine theta. And we're still going to apply the same torque, I mean, the same, the same torque, the same force, and it's going to be applied perpendicularly, so, right? So it's just going to look like R1F. So R1 is what we're looking for. R1 should equal R sine theta. Since R is listed as L in this problem, that would just be L sine theta. So our answer is answer choice A, and we are done. All right, next question. A square piece of plywood on a horizontal tabletop is subjected to two horizontal forces shown. Where should a third force of magnitude 5 newtons be applied to put the piece of plywood into equilibrium? Well, we have one force going this way, force going up. I think it's kind of obvious that there should be a force right there. And a force right there of 5 newtons, right? Because that makes all these torques equal, right? Because this is at the center. This is at the center, so this technically is not applying a torque. So this 5 newtons here is counterclockwise, so you need a counterclockwise torque as well to balance that out. But you also need something pushing down because it's pushing up. So you need this arrow here. The answer is A. Let's move on. Look at the following diagram. This is the torque around point O equal in magnitude to the torque around point X in the diagram. All four line of point paper. Alright. So this is just going to be L. This is just going to be L F right there. This is just going to be 2LF for A, so that doesn't work. For B, that's just going to be LF over 2, so it doesn't work. And then in C, our, our angle is 150 degrees, right? So it's 2F times L times sine 150. And the sine 150 is 1 half. So this is going to cancel out. This is going to work because it also has FL. But we should look at the last one. We have a 30 degree angle here, so our angle is only going to be 60 degrees. So it's going to be 2FL60. Unfortunately, 60, sine 60 is not 1 half, so this doesn't work. Let's keep going. A rod of length L and of negligible mass is pivoted at a point that is off-center with length shown in the figure below. The figures show two cases in which the masses are suspended from ends of the rod. In each case, the unknown mass, M, is balanced by a known mass, M1 or M2, that the rod remains horizontal. What is the value of M in terms of the known masses? Alright, let's see. So we can be signed using that this is an equilibrium, that M L1 is going to equal to big M1 L2, and then M2 L1 is going to equal to M L2. Two. And then if we divide those by each other, we get that M over M2 equals M1 M1 over M. So that means that when you multiply out by both sides, M squared equals M1 M2. We take the square root and M equals M1 M2. So answer choice A. Let's keep going. 
The system of two wheels fixed to each other is free to rotate about a frictionless axis through the common center of the wheels and perpendicular to the page. Four forces are exerted tangentially on the rims of the wheels as shown. The magnitude of the net torque on the system about the axis is what? So these are all tangential torques, so they're all 90 degrees. This one, and this torque is going to be 2F times 3R, so 6RF in the in the clockwise direction. This is going here, right, not that. Not there, it's not yet. Here is, and here are both the 3R. So that's going to be 3RF counterclockwise plus another 3RF counterclockwise. Right? And those two are going to cancel out because this becomes 6RF and that cancels out. Right, so then what? Then we have just this force left over. This force left over. And that's F times 2RF, so that is going to be 2FR as the net torque, and the answer will be B. Let's keep going. For the wheel and axle system shown, which of the following expresses the condition required for the system to be in static equilibrium? Well, we can just calculate these two torques and set them equal to each other. This one is M, M1A. And that's supposed to equal M2B. That is answer choice B. And that was pretty quick. Next one. A meter stick of negligible mass is placed on the fulcrum at the 0 0.60 meter mark, with a 2 kilogram mass hung at the 0 meter mark and a 1 kilogram mass hung at the 1, millimeter, 1 meter mark. The meter stick is released from rest in a horizontal position, Immediately after rest, the magnitude of the net torque on the meter stick about the fulcrum is most nearly what? So let's draw our meter sticks again. All right, so meter stick is placed on the fulcrum at the 60 meter mark, right there, or 0 0.6. It says negligible mass, and then here's the 2, ma two kilogram mass, here is the 1 kilogram mass, and uh, this one kilogram mass times the 0 0.4 meters of radius is going to be 0 0.4 in the clockwise direction. This one of 0 0.6 times 2 is going to be 1.2 in the counterclockwise direction. So we're going to end up with 1.2 minus the 0.4. That's going to be 0 0.8. Then we have to multiply by that 10, that gravitational constant that we always neglected. That becomes 8 newton meters as the net torque. That was our last question for the MCQs. And let us move on to the FR FRQs. A box of uniform density weighing 100 newtons moves in a straight line with constant speed along a horizontal surface. The coefficient of sliding friction is 0 0.4, and a rope exerts the force F in the direction of motion as shown above. On the diagram below, draw and identify all forces on the box. All right, so as always, you have FG, you have FN, oval force, you have just F, that force, the line force, and then you have uh, the force of sliding friction. So that's it. Right, so calculate the force F exerted by the rope that keeps the box moving at constant speed. Alright, so let's go to this other slide to put some more work up. Now the coefficient of sliding friction is 0 0.4, and that's times the normal force, which is 100 newtons, right? 100 newtons, which is going to be 40 newtons. So the force F needs to provide 40 newtons to keep this at net, no net force at a constant speed. The answer is 40 newtons. All right, part C. 
A horizontal force F applied at a height 5 thirds meters above the surface as shown on the diagram above is just sufficient to cause the box to begin to tip forward about an axis through point P. The box is 1 meter wide and 2 meters high. Calculate the force F. All right. So the center of this is 0 0.5 meters from the axis. So the radius of that torque of the center of the like the mass itself 0 0.5 times mg, right? So 0 0.5 times 100 newtons is going to be 50 newton meters, right? And the other torque is going to be this 5 thirds meters, and that's going to be the applied, the applied F, right? So F times that 5 thirds is going to equal 50 newtons, so 50 newton meters, so F is going to be 30, that is it for that FRQ, let's keep going. Two masses M1 and M2 are connected by light cables to the perimeters of two cylinders of radii R1 and R2 respectively, as shown on the diagram with, above with R1 equals 0 0.5 meter, R2 equals 1.5 meter, and M1 equals 20 kilograms. It's pretty easy, it's like a multiple choice, right? That's why I added another FRQ at the end, because these are pretty short. But, so R1 is 1 meter, is 0 0.5 meters, so 0 0.5 times 20, is supposed to equal 1.5 times something. So we divide it by 1.5, and we get 20 thirds kilograms. And that's our answer. Alright, pretty simple. Let's move on to our last FRQ. Uniform rod of mass M and length L is supported at the left end by a horizontal axis into the page and perpendicular to the rod as shown above. The right end is connected to the ceiling by a thin vertical thread so that the rod is horizontal. Express the answers to all parts of this question in terms of M, L, and G. Determine the magnitude and direction of the force exerted on the rod by the axis. Well, exerted on the rod by the axis. Okay, that is just going to be the opposite of what this thread does. Right, so the thread pulls this S M up and it has MG force. Right? The same thing with the horizontal axis. It's pulling a force up of mg, right, just, that's all it's doing. So the answer to part A is mg, because it's just holding the rod up against the force of gravity. And then part B, if the breaking strength of the thread is 2 mg, determine the maximum distance r measured from the hinge axis that a box of mass 4m could be placed without breaking the thread. All right. So what does that mean? So, so this is the hinge axis, right? And that's going to be, the, the distance from here is going to be the moment arm, right? So this, this breaking strength is pulling upwards at 2 mg, right? Because, I mean, like, at its maximum, it's pulling up with 2mg. Right now, it's pulling up with mg. At its maximum, you're pulling up with 2mg. And we'll be going down. It would be 4mg. So it would have to be half of the length to make this work. So the maximum distance r would just be l over 2, half the distance. Well, that's it for this video. That's it for this unit and for the entire course in general. I, I will be back later with, of course, other subjects, but I will also do like a short run through of an AP physics exam just to help like go over those concepts one more time. But until then, see you next time.